going? Very good, very good, thank you. Some lovely looking things you got here, very uh, cute I'd say, which is a weird thing to say about all it is, hardware. It is a bit of a weird thing, but I think we've definitely gone for a bit of a different design angle here. You know, you can buy silver and black end faces all over the place. No one makes anything like this, so it's really cool. So these are a standalone kind of audio interfaces that Network together, is that about uh, that's, that's pretty good, yeah. I mean, start with one box, because that's you know maybe what your studio is. Um, but as you need to grow, uh, you can add devices on our network. So you, you, know, you start with maybe the base unit here, the uh, 4x6 desktop interface. And as you need to grow your studio, you could drop one of the, the musician cubes or the, the de dedicated headphone output cubes onto the network and grow your system like that. It's really, really cool. So where does the audio end up? How does that get ingested into the computer? Is that okay, so it is, yeah, it's a, a network cable back to your computer. Uh, and as far as your computer concerned, it doesn't matter how many boxes you have, it's one big interface. Core Audio or ASIO compliant for Mac or PC. So it's kind of utilizing the, what we've seen in live, right, yeah, I, Ethernet, audio Ethernet. Exactly, I mean, it makes, it makes cabling systems really easy. It's easy for people to deploy, uh, you know, analog cables, patch bays, can become a thing of the past because the network itself is your patch bay. Right, so these things will basically just show up as devices. Yeah, you have a, a setup panel which allows you to populate the devices on the network. There's no IP addresses. It's all just easy discovery on MAC addresses. Really, really easy. And how does the computer access those audio streams? I mean, we've got there's so many conflicting uh, protocols, AVB. And, yeah, uh, and I mean, every, everybody seems to have their own network protocol. Ours is SoundGrid. It's a waves in uh, a waves developed network, but it integrates into a wide range of products. I mean, we're we're here at the show. We know that other manufacturers are joining in with SoundGrid. We've been doing it. Digico, Yamaha, Allen Heath. So it is becoming a really widely adopted platform, if you like. So when I've got one of these plugged in, and my DAW just sees it, I have to set the driver. Yeah, uh, like in, in Pro Tools, your, your playback engine or your I.O. device, you pick SoundGrid, and the uh, SoundGrid Studio application negotiates between the physical hardware you have and whatever door you're going to run. Right. So then, uh, presumably, you know, things like latency, all, people always expect high latency over Ethernet cables. But they do, uh, and it, you know, all latency is very dependent on the computer you have and how fast it is and buffer sizes. The one thing we have is the network DSP, the SoundGrid server, which guarantees low latency monitoring at less than a millisecond. So, which is pretty, pretty which is good. you know pretty good. If you don't have a server, you can still get latency of you know a few milliseconds by having a low buffer size. So it's no different really to. Uh, a USB or a firewire interface that you might already use. Okay, so take me through some of these devices. I mean, okay, so this one in the middle is the, the biggest in the new range. It's a, a four input, six output device, two mic channels, uh, so two, uh, two mic channels, two uh, line guitar instrument channels. Uh, we've got a monitor output, a fixed line output, and a headphone output. So that's four in, six out on this device. Over to this side is what we call our musician's cube. So we have uh, a mic input and a guitar input and a headphone output. I mean, that's really all most musicians need when they start. You know, they've got their sing, they play the guitar, and they want to hear themselves. So that's really cool for that. And then... So what, what is this? Uh, this is our... This is the, so the, it's your level control. So how hard you're driving your headphones. Right. Really nice, big, easy control to use. It's really, really cool. And over on this side, this is our dedicated headphone amp. So of course, it's, look, it's connected to our network and it's delivering audio on the network, uh, you know, like the other devices. This has one cool trick up its sleeve, has four inputs. So when we press the knob, we can select between uh, an analog input, an AES input, so digital, our network input, which is what we have here, and lastly, we can actually pair our phone to this and run Bluetooth. So it becomes a, a high quality headphone amp for your Mac, your PC, your tablet, your smartphone, Whatever you have, that's a Bluetooth source. Will that Bluetooth end up on the, on the, on no, the network back to the... No, no, it's purely for monitoring. You know, maybe you're sitting in the office and you, you, know, you, you sit at your desk and you want some good quality headphones. This could be the device for you. Could you just drive a pair of monitors off it? Or would you you be... could, yeah. I mean, you know, we've got, we've got the, the, the quarter inch and the three and a half mil. Yesterday at our demo, we ran this off to a, a, an amp and we powered some monitors off it. So, I mean, you know, Pretty flexible device, and again, we've got this great big, easy to use tactile 
uh, level control on top. So, you know, we've worked hard to do all this. The last thing about these devices, they're all DC powered, or you can power them from the ethernet, PoE. So we've made our own uh, network switch, which right. delivers power to four devices. Which means, you know, in the studio or your home, you're only running a single cable to get your power and your audio. Makes it really, makes really cool. Lot, yeah. Makes a lot of difference. So, I mean, speaking of the router, do you need a special router? No, I mean, Normally, no, no, if you're not gonna do power, any old switch really will probably do it. But if you want the PoE, of course, we want it to buy our switch. And so how does the network prioritize the audio packets if it's in a domestic it's, network? Uh, it's a standard layer two IP protocol. So it's no different to, you know, Dante or other devices, which on a standard like Netgear or HP switch quite happily work. Okay, so I mean, I guess it's look lovely and they look kind of cute, but I'm guessing, you know, it's down to pricing and how, uh, and look, how they yeah. work it. So. It comes down to pricing. Uh, here in the US, the, the main desktop unit is going to list somewhere around $850, which puts it in you know good competition with other high quality interfaces. And the other ones fall in at somewhere around $550 and about $510. Um, so all in all, you know, for the design quality and the build and the sound, I think it's a really, really good package. So and like you say, you can expand, you can just... Yeah, I mean, how often do you buy an interface and when you need to get something bigger, you replace it. Here we're buying into a, an ethos, a concept where you start with one device and as you need more you can add to it. It's not about single interfaces. So does the number of inputs aggregate? Yeah, so the, ne the network will carry somewhere up to about 500 channels in total. So you're never within a few boxes like this ever going to start hitting the capacity of the network and your, your interface just grows, grows. Excellent, thank you very much. Hey, you're most welcome. Award-winning customer service. Fast, free shipping on most orders. Own the gear of your dreams today.